Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, and I'll be playing Sebastian Crow, the half elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the Tabaxi Gloom Stalker Ranger. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. Thank you for joining us again. If you're just tuning in for the ver very first time, we are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for Dungeon Masters and guides for players. You can also find all prior episodes of this campaign available for your viewing pleasure there as well, so check it out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. Tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. They sent us a fantastic collection of their premium metal dice to use at our game tonight, including these absolutely vicious gold and bronze <laughs> D20s that I've been rolling for the past couple of weeks. They have finally found their groove, I think. I, I don't like it when your dice find no. grooves, <clears throat> unless they're like negative grooves, like ones no. and stuff, then it's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, they just have to gain, get warmed up. They, it takes them a couple games to get into it, and then they become... You know, uh, if you want to get a set of these amazing dice for yourself, you can head on over to SkullSplitterDice.com, and when you're checking out a purchase, use the discount code DDUDES to save 15% on your first order. With that, let's return to the ruins. Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalk the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Welcome back to the ruins of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, a fierce battle was underway in the outskirts of Drakenheim at Temple Gate, where the Hooded Lanterns and the Silver Order have united alongside our heroes to assault Temple Gate, which is currently under the control of a pack of vicious gnolls. Launching the might of both the Silver Order and the Hooded Lanterns, our heroes flew in on the backs of griffins with the knight captain of the Silver Order, Theodore Marshall himself, who then they were airdropped via teleportation onto the top level of Temple Gate, where they slaughtered the gnolls, destroyed their siege weapons mounted on the top, and even took out a manticore in the process. Woo. Mostly it was Pluto Jackson, but Sebastian and Veo helped. <laughs> Sebastian has all the more. Yeah, there was a, there yeah, was there was a, a really... pretty amazing fireball. Yeah, who threw that fireball? Yeah. That was probably the highlight. Better than Pluto's stupid turn. That's not, that's not <laughs> true. <laughs> With that, Great. our heroes have cleared out the top levels of Temple Gate and have managed to open up the first portcullis gate of the two portcullises. With the horns of the Silver Order sounding a cavalry charge rushing towards the gates, our heroes now must get to the other gate mechanism in the southern tower of Temple Gate so that the Silver Order can press the attack and seize the gate. With this, they will be able to have a much stronger hold in Drakenheim that our heroes now stand in the top level of the north tower amidst the broken bodies of a pack of gnolls that you have cut down viciously the mechanism is open the gate has risen the horns and the thunder of cavalry can be heard in the distance as the silver order charges forth time is short what are you going to do I think we, we we're going to pile the stuff on top of the mechanism just to hide it. Yeah, put a sheet over it. Yep. Nobody will notice the sheet. <laughs> the more <laughs> obstacles they have, the better. Um, and then we figured we'd take some of the 
uh, bigger pieces in the room and on our way out, like pile them in front of the door. So that way to make it yeah. take longer to get in. So yeah, yeah. I and can destroy the ladder, destroy yes. the ladder. Yes. So you're going to destroy the ladder, drag one of the tables or some of the furnishings in this room and just set them in front of the door and then close the door. Yeah. Okay. Is there a lock on the door? There is a lock on the door and a bar, but from the other side. Can I, do I need to be able to see Mage Hand or can I leave Mage Hand in there with the bar in hand, close the door, (laughs) drop the bar? You could leave your Mage Hand there, but because you can't see what you're manipulating to Mm. to do that. Even if it was holding the bar and then I leave, close the door and then it just lets go? It might go on. It depends on how far. The door has to be able to close, and then it would be above the door. With right? an arcana check to, to hold it in time? Ooh. Yeah, you could, because you're going to have to remember as the door shuts. All yeah. right. Arcana check. Ten. Okay. As you release the mage hand as the door closes, you hear the clatter of the bar falling on the ground. I think it worked, guys. <laughs> I'm just Perfect. thinking, could I take my thieves tools, and like, is there any keyhole on the outside? There is, yes. Okay. I want to see if I can like tinker and like lock it with my thieves tools from the outside. Opposite of what I would normally do with my cool. thieves tools. Cool, give me a thievery check with Backwards your thieves tool. Compatibility. Oh. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh. These tools is uh, just plus proficiency. proficiency plus dexterity. Plus. Oh, plus because she's proficient in them. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. After it takes you about a minute of fiddling, but you're able to close the latch. Yeah. Nice. Okay. The Very door nice. holds. I mean, they might just break the door down, but at least this will. That's why we put the table in front. Yeah. Uh. I was bleeding a little. I'm going to drink a potion yeah. okay. to stop the slight cut that I have that was bleeding a little bit on me. Yeah, yeah, you've brought it up. So you've locked times. the door and you're smashing the ladder going up and the ladder going down? Uh, We're going down first. Okay. Go down first and then we'll smash it. And then the we'll ladder. break the ladder. So, because there's a ladder going from here to the rooftops. I smash that one. You're smashing that one. Yep. And then you're going down and smashing the next ladder as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that okay. way, basically, the only way back in is through falling. Or. Climbing up nothing. Yeah. So yeah. right right now you've locked the door and destroyed all the ways back onto this level safely, aside from getting back onto the rooftop somehow. Yeah. Yes. I got, I got my, I got ropes. And we'll yeah, we'll yeah. figure it all out Shots once we stuff. claim this tower. We'll but cross for that. now, we, yeah. we'll cross that. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah, we'll climb that like ladder when we need it. Yes, there we go. We'll climb that <laughs> ladder Boom. when we need it. Okay. So you head down and pull the ladder down and smash it to pieces. You are now on the next level of the low, the mid level of temple gate. Judging by how far you've climbed down, this would be the level that is on the line of the battlements of the city walls itself. So this like goes over the gate. This goes over the gate and because you flew in and saw that there were doors leading from these towers onto the battlement, it stands to reason that there are probably doors on this level that lead out onto the battlements mm-hmm. of the city walls. Ooh. Yeah. I don't um, know if we want that, though. Weren't there paladins, though, getting on the wall? and then To the south, to yes. To the south. Okay, so we, we want to open that door, maybe. Well, we want to open both. That would be the primary, is get both the doors open. Yeah. And then... Um, but I even mean like the door onto the battlements to let the paladins in. Oh yeah, we could do that. It, but on the south side, because right now we're on the we're north. on the north side. Yeah, you're in the north tower. And did if we, we open the door, we might let them know. Did we notice coming in that the north wall was filled with gnolls? Gnolls were defending both the walls. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we might want to close that. I mean, they might already be inside. Potentially, we know they're in the murder hole. Yeah, let's clear up the murder holes. Yeah. And then uh, we know we got to get up there anyways for the switch. As I said, you're in the staircase shaft, although it's not a staircase shaft, it's a ladder shaft. So you're on the landing between the ladders, and there's a door leading out to the northeast into the tower proper, almost exactly like it was the level above. You guys want to go in? Let's go for it. Well, um, should we stick to the plan? 
maybe we should just focus on getting the gate open. Let's That's what we're doing. Open. This okay. level, we can cross over top of the gate. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then get to the other side. And, and then we'll go at least up open a level it. Yeah. and open the other gate. Okay. Yeah. So we're on the right level. We just have to go through, but I'm worried about what's on the other side of this door. I'll go first. I didn't even have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Pluto Jackson, you open the door <laughs> and That's you creepy. see a chamber that is appointed with a ma- all manner of barrels and several large tables. You can smell the acrid scent of that acidic fluid that you saw the knolls boiling up and dumping over as you see that there are several barrels stacked up in the middle of this room that appear to be filled with that fluid some of them are leaking just a little bit and so you can see the puddles of them all across the floor it's this rather translucent sort of purpley grainy liquid everywhere there are several racks of weapons as well on this level as well, um, there are a table and a door leading over where up above there was the ma- machinery on the prior level. Here, there's a door leading out into the room ostensibly with the murder holes in it and another door leading out onto the battlements as well. Otherwise, though, this room appears to be deserted, though you can hear the sounds of battle and you can hear sounds coming from both the walls and the next room over of something being shuffled around and almost like the clanking and clattering of weapons or armor or equipment in the next room. I'm going to go into the room. Mm-hmm. Um, why don't we roll the acid into the room and then you light it on fire? In what room? The only thing I'm not sure of, because I was I was a hundred percent thinking this, is like how do we get past it after? What if it blows up way more than we want it to and destroys the gate? <sighs> yeah, because I was a hundred percent thinking like let's blow up the acid, <laughs> yeah. but then I'm worried do we blow ourselves up? Like I don't know the the volume of explosion that will come mm. from shooting this you know fire. Maybe we'll try with a smaller por- portion, like a bottle size, and then go up from there. We'll build our way up. Okay. I would even say as well, maybe from where we came, so that way nobody goes up from here, regardless of what they have equipment wise, that they're not able to get in this room again. Although we'll want to get in this room again once we've cleared the. Yeah, we and there is another level going down as well. Oh, it uh, keeps the, going. The ladder goes down at least yeah. once more. Yeah. Um, maybe that's where we throw it. <laughs> <laughs> but we just Fire no, the hole. we just let all the paladins charge in. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do that. I have an idea. I know where we. I don't think they're this. in yet. I don't think they're in. There yet. are knolls manning the north of the wall. So why don't we open the door out to the battlements? Roll a barrel out. I shoot the barrel. Oh, hope yeah. that there's a bunch of knolls out there, and we'll see how that goes. Okay. Trial run. Yes. The Bail? only thing is that gives away our position. Yeah. Let's. Let's just kill the ones in like the circular area, Let's put and a then barrel. we'll and then we'll cross that next ladder bridge. Yeah. Let's put a barrel just right in front of that door, so if they do come in from the north battlements, mm. they spill the acid, and then they have to walk through it. Fair. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Take like one big I, barrel. We like. I'll help you, Pluto. Like. I'll see. So you I'm rush. Not doing take one of the actually. barrels <laughs> off, and you roll it up to the doorways by the where the actual arrow slits are. Who's going to open the door to the arrow slits? Oh, um. I can make. Oh wait, hand. yeah, because you're talking about the 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 half moon. The, yeah, there's the there's the half moon section where all the arrow slits are. So we're talking about the one oh. that leads outside. We should do both. Ah, both yes. would be good. Okay. So out onto the battlements themselves. Yeah. So okay. We're put the barrel there, but then I think we should just go clear out the half moon. Yeah. Let's, let's, okay. Yeah. Let's just go kill everything. Dump the dump the. Okay. Dump the stuff in there too. No. Alrighty. Okay. Not. As you do so, you can all roll me a d6, please. Uh oh. Did we spill acid on ourselves? Four. Four. Five. Okay. As you. So you're going to roll a barrel out onto the battlements. Just up against the door. Okay. So that if they. If anybody tries to come in, we're going to shoot the barrel. Okay. Sounds good. So you roll the barrel up to the battlement. The door to the battlement. What are you going to do next? Let's go. Murder the people. Yeah, let's the go murder holes. the ones in the murder holes to clear out the rest of the, the town. The murder holes or the uh, 
the half moon. Yeah. The half moon, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, do you want to open the door? Um, I call shotgun. Pluto, you take one side. We'll take the other. Okay. Seems fair. All right. Okay. I ready my bow. I am going to mage hand this door at the same time that Pluto kicks open this On door. three. Are you going for the the door to the murder holes over the gates or the doors over the uh, the battlement section? Uh, the battlements. Okay. Go for it. All right. You ready? Open. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On three. Open. One. Two. Three. Open. Okay. <laughs> you open the doors up both at the same time. And what is beyond the doors... Uh-oh. At first appear to be a group of gnolls, but there's something wrong with them. Their fur is matted and mangy and falling out in thick patches, and as they turn around and hiss at you rather than growl, you can see that the one that turns around to you is missing its entire lower jaw, and its eyeball is dangling out along the side of its face, And its entire stomach has been spilled open and its intestines are falling out all around it. It's still wielding a bow and it's been shooting out the arrow slit in front of it from uh, several arrows that are beside it. But the amount of flesh that is left on it is just dangling from its bones and it is almost skeletal in its overall size and shape. As they turn around to hiss at you, you can roll for initiative. Um... There's Gross. no way that I was prepared for zombie gnolls. <laughs> Good pun. Thanks. How'd you do? I, I got. Thank God for the shield that gives me advantage because I always roll like a one or a oh. four to start. What'd you get? So I got uh, my total right now is an eleven. I got a ten and a one. I got Fifteen. Thirteen. And we did hear ones in the other room. Clanking. Clanking. Hey, only I clank. Clunk. No, you clunk. No, you clunk. Oh, yeah. They, they, clank, they clank. I clunk. You also clink when you're trying to be quiet. Maybe I should... Uh, Is Pluto Jackson clinker clank? I should do a, 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 a call response with their clanking. <laughs> clank. I'll just add a whoosh in there with my arrows. <gasps> whoosh. Whoosh. What do we got for initiative? 15. 13. 11. 11. 11. Wow, so Sebastian goes first. <laughs> Who's this? Veo. Backwards. Quick off the dro- uh, backwards. Veo, day. slow off the drop. A little bit. A little bit. I wasn't okay. expecting, you know, dead gnolls. Just a lot. So, one. Sebastian, you see these undead gnolls as they turn to attack what will you do um first i seeing them i immediately jump behind veo <laughs> <laughs> and uh the first one through the door uh noticing the dismemberment and the skeletal structure of this knoll i immediately cast chill touch on it cool roll to hit Chill it to the bone. Chica. 20. That is a hit. Nice. Uh, that's going to be seven damage. Cool. As the necrotic energy pours out from your chill touch, your magic pulls the threads that are animating it and it falls to the ground in a pile. Nice. nice. Ooh, threads. And as I do that, I'm like, I'm going to make it weaker. And then I just like murder it. I'm like, it was already pretty weak. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'm good. Vale, you're up next. Um, I'm like cautious because I see this one go down and I'm like, there's got to be more of them. And I scooch up close to the door and I see one around the corner and I go, ah, and I shoot it with my, <laughs> nice. my bow uh, for 17. That is a hit. Wrecked. It, it didn't survive from seven damage. Um, <laughs> as Jill collects nine dice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you do less than 15 damage with this shot? Nope. Okay. So you... I roll anyway. You, you, you always roll. Yeah. Always roll. So you pop 
the vertebrae of its neck and the and the whole thing just drops like a puppet. I move further in, <laughs> still exploring. Like, oh, that wasn't too bad. Shoot the next one. Uh with 18. Also a hit. Pop. And then I move around <laughs> one more time for the last one. <laughs> Uh, with a 15. So Sebastian <laughs> opens the door up with Mage Hand and disan- disbinds the first one and Veo just sees that, rushes in and just thunk, 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 you just hear three quick shots as these <laughs> creatures just have their the all of the animating force po- flown right out of their, their existences. I open the door and it's Veo. <laughs> yeah, by the time Paluto <laughs> opens the door, Veo's there. Veo? Surprise! <laughs> I, it was me the whole time. No, I'm joking. I, I just killed a whole bunch. We did open the doors at the same time. So I imagine you open it, you see the skeletal knoll, and you're just like, <gasps> and, and you just see just, the head of it I fly off and shatter sword. against the wall. <laughs> and then Veo's just there, and you're like, oh. And I walk back out and I say, hey, Sebastian, we're tied. Ooh. <laughs> okay, Paluto, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to. Um... <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, and. Uh, Run towards the other door, mm-hmm. and I'm going to listen against the door. You hear the sound of barrels being unstacked. No, that's blasphemy. <laughs> we only stack our barrels. <laughs> like a big barrel being lifted off and set down, and the sloshing around of fluid. That was like all my movement, so I'm going to wait at the door. And, uh, shoot. Uh, shoot. You oh. could open the door. Is that a good idea? <laughs> well, I'm just wondering what I'm going to do if I open it. You could shut it again. <laughs> you can still attack. I, I, I'm going to open the door. Okay. And uh, I, I'm going to have my, um, my javelin ready. Beyond the door is a battle-ready room. You can see here the mechanisms of the gates going through. So this this tall room goes right up to the rooftops, and you can see the rooftop rafters overhead. And you see above you all the machinery of the gate operation. And you can see that raised up is the portcullis on the other side. So it's been raised up, and the, the gateway is open. At the front, the one we just At the did, front, right? front end. The other one, you can see the top end of it in the slot in the ground, the great chains holding it up, and then how it gets chained up onto the other side of the mechanism that's on the level above you as well. But on this level, the entire floor is opened up with murder holes ranging from anywhere from about six inches to about a foot in width. Um, all of them are kind of funneled. So while the opening at the top is wider at the bottom, once something is just poured down here, it would be fine. Several of them are long slits designed to shoot arrows down through at the people in below. And there, um, there's a set of rafters and machinery as well that extend down to this level. It looks like a pair of locks as well can be slidden down over the gates when they're opened or closed. but. The main thing in this room is that there are more of these barrels that have been stacked up. Barrels of various size and construction. But here, there are four more of these skeletal, emaciated knolls. And they are, two of them are taking the lid off of one of these barrels and getting ready to dump it down one of the murder holes. And I throw my javelin at that one. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Die! Uh, like a twenty. That's a hit. Five to hit. <laughs> um. Uh, for ten damage. Nice. You throw the javelin forward. It lands in in its rib cage and shatters the bones apart, and it collapses down in a heap, with several of the bones falling through one of the murder holes. And then I can I draw my hand axe. Yep. And throw it at the one that was also helping it. Yep. Dies. Uh. Getting a um, 16 to hit. It collides with the with its face. And this one's for uh, 11 damage. Splitting its head in half, the rest of it collapses to the ground, and the barrel that the two of them were just starting to pick up drops down, sloshes about, and 
wobbles <gasps> unstably but stops. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> There's still two more of these creatures in the room. Seeing you come into the room, they rush forward towards you and their claw they barely have any weapons to them. They just have these sharpened claws that they rake across you, Pluto. Hello. Uh, I get a 22 and a natural one and a 11 and a 10 for so all you the hits. You okay, one, one hit. Yeah. So it comes in with this one claw and just rakes it across uh, the front of you and you take seven points of slashing damage. Ah! I... Um... Wound myself. It's a wound. It's a wound cry. Sebastian, you're up. I come up behind um, Pluto. So you come up behind as you come up behind Pluto and look into this room. You can see that there is another door directly opposite Pluto. This door, however, while it is originally of the same construction as the door, your arcane trained eye notices this immediately. For someone. There are not scratches in the door opposite. The bones that surround it are not fetishes that the gnolls have put in place, but rather the slashes that are in this door, you recognize them as um, the trappings of what might be an arcane lock. Ooh. So as I step around and I see the door, I say, guys, don't open that other door yet until I, t- I check it out. And I'm going to cast uh, Firebolt on the one that just uh, clawed at Pluto Jackson. Yep. Twelve? That hits. Oh, yeah. God. Smash his face. You're like right Nine now. damage. It is blast apart. Woo! And Anything I'm also going to take this opportunity to use a bonus action to uh, turn sorcery points into another spell slot. Okay. Yes. Bale, you're up. I come back out <laughs> around. So I'm like, oh, it sounds like there's some more noise over here. And I see the one guy and I say, duck. And I take my shot. And I go, where? <laughs> Down. <laughs> Below me? Uh, I mean, 20. <laughs> the last shot rings true, shattering the skeletal creature to pieces. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. What will you do now? Uh, Sebastian, you said you we shouldn't touch the store, so go check it out. Are we still in initiative order, or should I go check out the door? Time is of the essence, for you can hear the thunder of the Silver Order drawing near. Um, so I'm going to use my they're gonna turn. They're going to be at the gate in less than five minutes. I'm going to grab that barrel that dropped. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put the lid back on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, you said there was a lock for the gates, correct? There appears to be some bars that you could use in this chamber to prevent the gate from closing if you wanted to. And all the gate machinery is above your heads. But there's no winches. Like, there's the gears that are pulling the gate up and operating them. But there's nothing to get the mechanical leverage naturally in here that a human would operate. But she can bar the gate open, like just stick something in there. To there, there's as the as the front gate rises up. The there are places in it where you could slide some these metal bars that are on the ground to keep it open. Okay, I'm gonna do that while you're taking a look at the door. So I'm looking at the door. You're lidding up. Uh, yeah, lidding stuff. up and collecting my my hand axe and my. And yeah. I I am starting to um, examine the door and try to find a way to to disable this magic if there is a way okay give me an arcana check come on skull splitter don't fail me now oh you failed me now (laughs) oh no (laughs) that's a seven looking at this the um the arcane locks that are in place on this door have sealed it tightly closed if you can't even tell what the rules are behind this arcane lock. You recall that arcane locks may have passwords or things to do that, but what means this is actually sealed with, and if there are any 
protections in place to, to harm those who try tampering with it, you cannot tell. Guys, this door is locked magically. That's about as far as I've gotten. It? Can I also give it a go? Just to like peek over your shoulder and be like, hmm. Hmm. Having not had any direct experience with these mm-hmm. kind, of, kind of arcane locks before, you could still try opening it. Ooh, okay, no. <laughs> I um I, look at I the have door an and idea because like, because no there idea. is there is a keyhole on it, oh. um, but without any means to try to get past the spell, you don't even know if picking the lock is possible. You could try it though. Uh, can I should I throw something at the door? I just don't want to touch it and then be like fried. Bananas, you know. Uh, I mean, this could be any number of things happening on this door. Use you said- one of the knoll hands. No, can I get yeah to try to open it? <laughs> like use one of its arms Let's and just, just start like poking it through the lock and try to like push the door and, open. Like, throw it at the door. <laughs> Maybe it needs it's it, it. You said it needs a password. Maybe the password is undead thing. A dead knoll finger. Or we keep going down to try to get across. Yeah. Or we somehow get back upstairs because we really or, kind of whoopsied that thing. Um, is there any like windows on either the front or back that I could fit through? That you could physically fit through? Yeah. No, the okay. windows here are arrow slits. Mm, okay. At the at their widest, they're not even wide enough for your your head to fit through. It's not because I have a big head. It's because the windows are too small. Change of plans. <laughs> what if? Sebastian, can you make me giant again? And I could just lift the portcullis from here. I'll just grab the chains and pull it. Or you could. Does it look like that would work if we had a big enough creature pulling the chains? If you had a big enough creature pulling the chains, you can certainly try. Thinking of like a, poly- a polymorph giant. Do you ape. think it might work? It might. You it's, could also like. Uh, it's going to take a lot of my power. I'm I'm going to look at the the chain. So you, the way the portcullis is, it's like it, it's like below us, right? Yes. Currently. Yeah. And there's chains that are tying it up to the mechanism. Below. Yeah. There's chains that are tying it to a series of of mechanical pulleys up in up in the top. That then when those pulleys, then when the winch inside pulls it raises the portcullis so so you could pull you could try pulling the chains manually or lifting the portcullis manually but you would need a prodigious amount of strength to lift this massive gate and i try to lift it right now what happens if you try to lift the portcullis gate right i'm gonna try to get like a feel for how heavy it is. okay what okay so i'm gonna just kind of like okay give me a strength check (laughs) i can lift it uh, ten. <laughs> okay, Pluto, you are prodigiously strong, and you could probably, under ideal conditions, deadlift this thing up to maybe your knees, and you'd need to release it after maybe thirty seconds. So being able to open it, so you could lift it. But could you lift it long enough for an army to get through it? I've got an idea. Probably not. Well, you can polymorph giant ape, but we have these metal bars that we could stick in it. That's what I was thinking. Javelin, like, like we could stick stuff in it. Yeah. Well, guys, also my my ring, my mom's ring. I got this from my mom, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It has an enlarge reduce. Maybe that's all it. it needs. So an maybe... enlarge. Can you enlarge the giant I... ape? Enlarge Pluto. I lift it up, yeah. and then um, so you guys start jamming the spears in it to like hold the gate open, and then we don't ever have to go through the door. Yeah, does that work? Strength uh, checks and strength saving throws. You'll have advantage. It won't make you as strong as the ape, but it will give you advantage. And how well? How strong is the ape? Like I don't think the ape's that much stronger than me. Like I'm kind of as strong as a giant ape. Are you the the only difference being the ape is a huge creature? Yeah, and thus its carrying capacity is higher. So its maximum lift strength 
is higher th- than yours, even though its raw strength score is lower. Your call, Pluto. Do you want to be enlarged or do you want to be extra enlarged? Well, I know that the giant ape is definitely going to work. I thought maybe just to try to save you a spell slot. But if it if this, you know what? Let's just go all out, Paul. Poly- because a polymorph lasts an hour, right? Yeah, and yeah. I mean, Plan B: smash through the arcade <laughs> door. And just kill everything on the say, other side. Can we it. smash through the brick and wall if this like, doesn't work beside the door? Yeah. <laughs> Around the door? I just push it Again, you can try, but the interior walls here are five feet thick. Pretty strong, yeah. yeah. You could punch your way mm. through the door, even if it blows up or something. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? No, don't <laughs> no! stop it. And before you start, you get to say Wait, no. What's I don't. Wor- <laughs> you turn, I, I touch you and you just ate. Okay. Shadowy tendrils come out of my hand and wrap around you, and you turn and transform Pluto Jackson into ape. an ape. Oh. All right, grab that ape miniature behind us. What are we using for the the giant? Nice, nice, nice. Um, so, so Pluto Jackson nice. increases in size, becoming this horrible shadow ape, and the the creature. Fortunately, because apes have to stoop. Because otherwise, if he could stand up at his full height, he would probably be hitting the rafters and the machinery above. <laughs> um, it would not be a pretty sight. So, here you are, Ape Paluto. <laughs> You're going to pick this portcullis up and I'm just gonna, try lifting it grab, straight yeah, up. Like right inside like the little holes. Okay. The little holes, and then just start lifting it. Give me a strength check with advantage. Ooh, boop, 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 as he's doing this, I go to grab the beams as well to get them ready. Okay. I grab the other Because yeah. we, we could do okay. this in stages too, yeah. right? Okay. Like as high as he gets it, we'll we'll beam it. Uh, 21. So you lift the gate about 10 feet up and the two of you go rush we, forward we with the, the bars the, the and you bars slam them, them uh, in J- and the bars slam into place with the gate half open just as Ape Paluto's strength gives out for the, the moment. Okay. okay, take a breather. We're going to do one more of those. Stretch. We're going to okay. do one. You're going to grab lower. Gonna and you're going to pull out and then be ready to push back in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 On the count of three, we're like going to pull it out and you're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make your hands more slippery? <laughs> Ape Pluto, no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> Thinking? Okay. You ready? I'm ready. One, two, three. Pull. Uh, 18. He lifts and he can't lift it too, 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 much, too much higher enough. And the gate starts to drop we down. Slide in as fast as we can. Okay. The two of you can give me quick dexterity checks. Uh, just raw dexterity. Raw dexterity. Raw dexterity. Yep. Ooh, 10. 14. So, Pluto, you managed to slam one of the bars in, and Vale, you got a, four, a 10. Mm. You slam both the bars in, but the gate drops. So, it's, it's still open about five feet, but it's dropped down. As this happens, you can hear the thunder of the cavalry coming close, and the door swings open. Uh oh. <laughs> the, the arcane lock door? Yes. The door swings open. Oh god. Roll for initiative. Ooh. Ah. Quit my initiative. Now, when I'm an ape, I'm everything ape, right? So like initiative is ape. Yeah. I also don't benefit from things like my weapons and armor and stuff. No, right? they're subsumed yeah. in your, your hands into your are the form. Weapons. Oh, I am a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna th- I'm going to throw somebody down one of these murder holes. Yeah. And they're like, we don't fit. And I'll make you fit. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to. Nice. Get him. What's the Donkey Kong it? I'm going to Donkey Kong it. You Just are chilling. Donkey Kong right now. <gasps> throw them barrels. Don't throw them barrels. <laughs> <laughs> you said Okay. It. What do we got? Uh, 26. 26 for Vail. <laughs> and 20. she's back on top. 20 for Sebastian. Uh, 15 for... I thought I was going to be first okay. again. Oh, I can't. Oh. Sebastian, sorry, what did you get in? 20. 20. Okay. And Pluto? Uh, 15. Okay. I'm actually a little more dexterous. Dex- de- dexterous. 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 There it is. We found it. We got a lot. <laughs> um, as a giant ape than I am as a human man. I'm also a little bit stronger. 
and a little bit um, warmer. Good. <laughs> I'm a little hungry um, though, too. Okay. I, I want us to get that gate open. That's the number one priority. And I have an idea. It's open five feet at least. It's people they could crawl, crawl Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm five of four. Get off your horse. Like, As the doors open die. up, several more of the skeletal knolls stumble forward. Yeah, just uh, put uh, one, one or two in. And Sebastian, you turn around. Um, yeah, there's four total in there. But as you turn around, you hear this voice say, find out what's going on over there and kill them. And you can, Sebastian, you can see into the room as the door opens up and there is this palpable glow of red and purple emanating throughout this entire room. And you can see in the center of it is a large bubbling cauldron with a spigot attached to the side of it and there are um there's a barrel under the spigot and one of the skeletal knolls is finishing opening up like closing the spigot and pouring this liquid in the cauldron into the barrel looking over the cauldron are three crone like figures one with purple skin that is covered in boils and pimples one that is covered in green skin that is sloughing off and ma- and cracked in place uh slough- that is sloughing off and the other with blue skin that looks like it might be frozen or suffering frostbite and the three crones finish dropping a few ingredients into the the cauldron and the purple-skinned one locks eyes with you, and her hooked nose and flabby face stare, uh, stare at you with hate in her eyes. And she says, you'll make some good ingredients. Excuse you? Do we have minis for those three? We do. Oh, my gosh. Woo! The purple, the blue, and the green. Oh. Gross. And they're around this... Uh... The cauldron, yep. I guess the purple one locked eyes with me. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. First off is Veo. Um, I'm kind of behind Sebastian, and I see these dead knolls, and I just start taking shots at them. So I'm going to get my three shots. Maybe okay. I'm ambush her on my first turn. Uh, seven. Seven. The shot goes right through its rib cage. Oh no! Second shot. Um, thirteen. Thirteen. That shot hits <laughs> its spine. And that was which one? The skeleton. Yeah. Dead. Take another one out. Uh. Nice. Seventeen. And another connects, so you're able to quickly shoot down two of the approaching skeletal knolls. I shift out of the room um, just about 10 feet back. Okay. All righty. Um, seeing all of this, Sebastian, I, I back up and I'm going to. Oh boy. I'm going to. I think, I think this works. I'm going to quicken a spell. And then that still gives me my action. Yes, that's correct. And with my action, can I throw a bead of fireball? Yes, you can. Okay. So oh, no. can I do oh, the no. uh, yeah. the action first and then the bonus action? You look you look into the room, Sebastian, and give me a perception check. Uh, fourteen. Looking into the room, you see all manner of arcane ingredients, scrolls, and books piled up amongst these crones collection of arcane objects would they survive a fireball perhaps perhaps not okay option number two no that doesn't work with the my quick and spell darn it there's so many valuable things in this room but i hate these witches <laughs> knowledge enemies knowledge 
uh, uh, Sebastian has one of those moments where he looks up and there's like those math equations <laughs> by his head. <laughs> and then he looks back and he locks eyes with that purple hag again and he says, you know what? I already have a book to study. <laughs> and he, he hurls the last fireball into the room. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, no. Are you throwing it in the center? I'm trying to land it right in their pot. <laughs> right in their pot. <laughs> this is why I left the room. Okay. Um, well, why don't you give me a... Let's see if you can throw the bead right in the pot. Give me a dexterity uh, attack roll. <laughs> Uh, do I ha- am I proficient in throwing? Yeah, beads? sure. Okay, fifteen. It lands in the pot, and the fireball ignites. It explodes, <laughs> sending the shrapnel of and acid of the pot flying all over the room. So the fireball goes off in the cauldron shatters the iron of the cauldron and sends all this acidic bile spreading all over the room. So instead of rolling the damage on the fireball, I'm going to have you roll 5d6 piercing damage and 5d6 acid damage. Because the fireball is basically contained inside the cauldron and instead it blows up. It's like a bomb. Yeah, it it basically (laughs) sets a bomb off. So the, the fireball energy is absorbed, destroying this cauldron and instead just sends shrapnel and acid everywhere. Um, gross. So five. Yeah. What do you want this so, to be? Acid or shrapnel? Six, Twelve. <laughs> Seventeen. Is this acid or shrapnel? Uh, so that's twenty-three shrapnel damage. <gasps> okay. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to use. Can I? Yeah, I can use both meta magic. No, because this is from the bead. That yeah, you threw. Right. I can't yeah. impact yeah. it. Okay, Call fine. It. Acid damage. Hmm? So 23 yeah. on the shrapnel. Uh, shrapnel. 13 on the acid. Okay, so 36 total. So two of the witches are able to turn away and they throw themselves to the ground as the cauldron ignites. The other, just it, it, this piercing shrapnel just strikes all the way up and down her back and she screams out as it bursts into her her green flesh. None of them are killed. Oh. The gnolls are completely destroyed, though. How many? Two. And with my quickened spell, Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw a web onto the... Okay. Um, as, the, as the last one falls to the ground, she sees you starting to cast the spell and she counterspells it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so I go, and nothing happens. She th- throws down, you, like the, the whole wreckage is clearing. She's getting to her feet. She sees you, makes eye contact again, says, no! And as your magic... Co- comes back up um she, the it's almost like the webs shoot forward and then they age thousands of years and decay as she waves her hands and counterspells Ooh, the magic that looks cool and i yell pluto smash and i <laughs> jump out of the room and like push myself up against the wall okay I'm like, hello hello <laughs> i did my best you did good blowing that, that up yeah Ooh. Okay. And that's the last of uh, my necklace of fireballs. So, Thrombrosia, the uh, the blue, um, the one that just counterspelled you. She turn turns forward and sees you rushing around the the corner over there, and she she says, "Oh, you nasty little mongrel!" Um, and she turns around and fires a lightning bolt that strikes through Paluto, uh, a Paluto, and hits Veo as well as it travels across the two rooms. The two of you can make dexterity saving throws. Listen, lady. Thirteen. A crackle of horrendous energy reaches down the, uh, the area. 
So Pluto manages to dodge it, but Veo doesn't. Veo, the lightning shoots up and down your tail, sending all your hair on end. Ah! Um, and you take 27 electrical damage. And Pluto, you take half that for 13. Mm-hmm. The next one, uh, she, um, Discrasia, Discrasia, uh, Discrasia, yeah. She is the blue one, and she turns and walk, uh, walks forward and says, "Oh, I've always wanted a kitty cat." Uh, and she sees Veo, and she casts Polymorph on you. Hey, what do I turn into? Make a Wisdom saving throw. Uh, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna counterspell. Uh, you're gonna counterspell. You came around the corner though. You don't have line of sight okay. to her. Okay. I guess I can't pop. Wisdom my head saving. In. No. Ooh, you got 12. it. Twelve. Twelve. She turns you into a regular house cat. No! <laughs> no! Meow. Meow. I just hiss. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shock my new pet. <laughs> Pluto, you're up. I turn. Okay, lightning bolt flies through the room. Yeah. It, it kind of singes me. I see her yell that at Veo. And, and you see Veo turn into a regular black cat. <laughs> maybe it's a maybe it's a Veo thing. Um, but this lady's standing in the doorway. Yeah. I'm going to bust her head in so i just i just give it one big punch like i wind up and i'm like kind of standing beside the door and i just kind of like throw my weight into it okay um and i get a 28 to hit (laughs) (laughs) smasher okay that's a hit yeah um and uh yeah she's not gonna like this um uh 23 damage. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to try to hit her again. There's another D10 for me. Remarkably, she makes her concentration oh, check. Can take, can, what? On Veo. Oh, yeah. oh. It's on like, now. And I'm punching her again. Uh, getting a uh, 21 to hit. <laughs> as she... Uh, as the punch comes down, she raises her hand and casts shield and blocks the attack. <laughs> And it, your fist lands into it, and she desperately looks. Oh, because she's <laughs> she's bloodied. <laughs> uh, okay, that's uh, that's Pluto. We go to the top with uh, Hemorrhage the Purple, um, and she sees uh, Pluto right up there in front of uh, in front of everybody, and she lowers her eyes down uh, upon him. Um, and she pulls her eye out as she weaves magic into it, and her eye comes out on this long eye stalk. Um, and as it does so, it kind of floats out above her like an antenna as she has cast the spell Eye Bite. Uh oh. Um, and the energy flares with this power. Um, and Pluto, you need to make a wisdom saving throw as an ape. Ten is not enough. Okay. You are panicked. Ah! Um, you are frightened of her, and on each of your turns, you have to take the dash action to move away from her by the safest and shortest available route. Uh oh. Do you ever fit through a door? No. <laughs> I'm just going to be pounding on the wall. And if I. Don't see her anymore. Do I? Uh, something happen or? Um, you are. Uh, I'm just super panicked yeah. right now. Um, you are frightened. Um, and if you if you move to a space at least sixty feet away from from it, where you can no longer see her, you are no longer frightened. The effect okay. ends. Yeah. Okay. The knolls have been destroyed. We go to the top of the round with Veo, who is a common house cat. Yeah. Um. For the the upper area, um, in the gears, is there any like landings? <laughs> um, well, there there are. 
Um, what would you like to do? Where are you going with this, Ram? <laughs> um, honestly, I'm just thinking about getting out of the way so these guys can stop the concentration. Um, actually, you know what? How, how, how far can I move? Um, can I ask you a question? How many hit points do you have? Two. <laughs> can someone just like... What happens if you die? Kick me. <laughs> <laughs> um, because they turn back if I lose all my hit points, right? Yep. Oh, actually, you know what? I just like scratch my face. <laughs> You're gonna scratch yourself? Yeah. Okay. I want to try to like undo this volleyball. <laughs> so you just want to like, <laughs> so you try to like charge and headbutt a wall? Yeah. Maybe okay. like some acid. No. Here's what I'm gonna have you do. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna have you roll an intelligence check as a cat. Okay. Uh, to see if you have the presence of mind to do that. Because while you do have your personality, as a, as the effect of the polymorph spell, your mental capacity is greatly diminished. Yep. Um, Minus zero. Yeah. Nope. Two. <laughs> okay. So you do scratch and claw at yourself, but as you start to do so, you realize that you're really itchy behind the ear, nice. and you start just scratching behind... <laughs> Naturally, oh, yeah. Oh, I get distracted by that nice yeah. feeling. Yeah, yeah. Sebastian, what are you gonna do? Um. Okay. Can I pick up the cat just as like a free action? Can, Can you like... pick up Cat Veo? Yeah. yeah, she's busy licking her butt. So yes, I I pick up Cat Veo, and I'm gonna try to uh, get like push past Blue and get to the other side carrying Cat. Mayo. Okay. And then I'm going to throw cat veil. <laughs> That's my action though, if I throw cat veil, right? Yes. Um Where are you going with this? I, I don't know yet. I was I, I was, don't actually have a lot of points Okay. Because before you get into the room, I'm gonna have you make a check to muscle past. Okay, you know yeah. what? You know what? We're just yeah. we're just doing this. I'm gonna run, and I'm just gonna throw Cat Veo at Blue, <laughs> <laughs> and I just throw it. And I'm like, go Veo, and then I am going to again hide. Okay, I'm run over and hide. Make an attack roll. Attack. What's the like dexterity? Yeah. What's the? <laughs> you've used your. Am I proficient with throwing cats? You know, you're kind of good at hurting cats, so go for it. Uh, uh, ten. So you throw Cat Veo forward, and she lands on the ground, right in, uh, at the feet of uh, of uh, of uh, Disgracia the Blue. And you see me poking my head up, uh, just from behind a barrel, going, "Get her!" Okay, Thrombrosia. Um, she. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's so funny. She sees the cat and, and um, she cackles to herself as well um, and turns around the corner and sees uh, Pluto Jackson Hello. Uh, as the ape and she's going to fire a uh, ray of sickness at you. Oh. She's going to upcast it using a higher level spell slot. Oh my god. She gets... <laughs> She gets an eight to hit. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> okay. Um, and Disgracia will go next. Uh, she is very close to that eight, but you are frightened as well. So she is also going to fire a ray of sickness at at you. Hello. Getting a 15 to hit. That's a hit. You take 20 points of poison damage. Can I counterspell it? No, don't, don't. Uh, no, I can't see her. She's in yeah. here, and I'm way over there. And make a Constitution saving throw. Um. Wait, where did the? There it is. Uh, sorry. How much damage again? Uh, twenty points of poison damage. Thank you. And then con save. Do, 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 do. Eight. <laughs> okay. Uh, you are poisoned as well. <laughs> and so you have disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. Although you also had that because you're frightened. 
I'm frightened and poisoned. Yeah, and I'm scared. It's your it's your turn. And I run the other way. So you can't fit through this door. So I'm just going to start <laughs> pounding on the wall, screaming okay. and throwing up. <laughs> like giant ape throw ups too. Oh, oh man. it's bad. It's bad. Yeah, because yeah, everything I eat is like, yeah. it's like, it's yeah. everything I ate last week. Yep. Yeah. And it seeps down the murder holes. Okay. Um, you hear voices cry out, the other gate hasn't risen yet. What should we do? Um, and you hear another voice say, I hope there, uh, what, what's going on in there? We're not running into a trap, are we? And you hear the horn calls out as this, um, as the silver orders charge stops. And they're, as they measure whether or not they can get into the gates itself. They're on this side though. They're on that side. Yep. That gate's up. So the one gate's yep. up. The one's five feet up. Right? Yep. Okay. Top of the round. Veo. You're a crazy cat in front of them. Bruh. I'm just like, I'm freaked out as a cat. Um, so I see this like crazy woman in front of me and I just like take a sweat. <laughs> okay, go for it. Yeah. I hope this kills her. <laughs> Please kill her. Crit. <laughs> <laughs> So you leap up into her face and start clawing her eyes. Uh, I do one slashing damage. <laughs> she, fails. <laughs> she fails her concentration check. Yes, Mayo. <laughs> you get the eye, the one that she pulled it's out. A nine on concentration. The eye that she pulled out, you grab it and you this run away. This is the one that polymorphed her. Oh. Yeah, so you leave up, scratch into her face, and now there's a full-size veo just riding on top of her. Uh, <laughs> that then, was amazing. Um, I'm going to... So that's my action. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use my feline agility to, like, nope, and I, like, back up through the door <laughs> around the corner. <laughs> like, not having that happen to me it's again. It's like a cat that realizes what's happened and... You leap around. It's a bigger version of what I once was. Okay. <laughs> Sebastian, you're up. Okay. I'm like in this barrel here. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to push. I want to, I do want to like try to push past her. All right. We're going to gonna make, uh, we're going to make an opposed dexterity check then. Can I use, uh, I guess that's the same. Yeah. Thing. Acrobatics. If it applies. Well, yeah. it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I get, I get a three. And you run up to her and try to push past her. She's no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then as she says no, I'm just going to thunderstep. <gasps> I was going to push past her in thunderstep, but uh, but that, that will hit a... That's Damn fine. it. I really wanted to push past her. <laughs> Man, you probably should have, have rolled a three. <laughs> well, thanks. Um, do you want a thunderstep or do you want to do something else? <laughs> Okay, you know what? I go to push past her. She pushes me back, and I'm going to hypnotic pattern. No, I'm already concentrating on this. Yeah. And I need I need you. I need you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to... I mean, from where you're standing, you could reach Ape Pluto if you want to thunderstep. Okay. So she pushes me back and I go, okay. And I grab Ape Pluto's leg and I just thunder step. My tail. You got my tail. Yeah. I, y Do I apes have tails? No. no. And I thunder step <laughs> into, the, into okay. the room. So Disgracia has to make a, uh, a check. Constit yes. Constitution 16. Okay. She, she crits it. So she only takes half damage. Uh. Mm -hmm can't kill them and put her back in the doorway um i like i love it i like it i love it i think it's a uh, d10s i think yeah it is those are not the right dice thank you very much you're very welcome oh, can i have that back you you 13 damage there you go <clears throat> Okay. Alrighty. And after I thunderstep, I run. I don't know, and I hide in the corner. 
Okay. Yeah, those doors are actually open because uh, the knolls that were in this room were the the withered knolls oh. from before. Yeah. Well, in that case, I run. Actually, I I move, so I can only really run to like okay the doorway. He's in the doorway. Okay. So, Thrombrosia, um, seeing you run in, into the room, um, looks at you, Sebastian, says, Oh, you annoying little red runt! I've got a much prettier look for you! And she casts Polymorph on you. And I cast Counterspell. Okay. Um, you will need to make a caster level check to stop her Counterspell. Okay. Is that, what, Arcana? Yeah. Or... Yep, you will need to beat 14. Okay. Nailed it. Okay. Nice. You defeat her counter spell. Awesome. Yeah. No more polymorph. What was he going to be? I go, no. Um, and Disgracia turns and says, you're going to let him control your feeble magic sister? And she says, I'll turn him into a newt. And she also casts polymorph on you. <laughs> Make uh, a wisdom saving throw. You can, you can beat it. You can beat it. So wise. So wise. So wise. So, so strong. Wise, so strong. So wise. I get an 11. <laughs> All right. He turns you into a newt. No. <laughs> which, what happens which to color my concentration? You can still concentrate on your spell while you're a newt. What, what color changed him? Um, that would have been, uh, that's Disgracia. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the hag purple. that, ar- no, Disgracia is the hag that had polymorphed. Oh, oh, blue. The Veil. blue one. Oh, yeah. perfect. Yeah. And what was the one that I mm. bite me? Uh, that uh, is, uh, that's uh, Hemorrhage, who is okay. the last one to act on the round after the Pluto. One? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So uh, with that, we go to Pluto, who is frightened uh, so still. How, but now you're well, on the other side. Now I have to, ch- I'm going to try to run away again. Which one are you running away from? The green yeah, one? Yeah, that one. There is nowhere for you to move. Okay. Um, that is uh, that is in this room. Have you ever heard an ape scream? So you so you can thrash out and attack, but you will do so with disadvantage. I thrash out and attack wildly. It's wild attack. Um, it's probably going to be a. <laughs> um, uh, a twelve. No. Ah! And do I s- swing twice? Yeah, yeah. So, so you thrash times. out wildly pounding against the walls and the ground with your sickness and everything, but throwing up. Right now, with, with where Sebastian left you, you're surrounded on all sides by all three of them, so you're effectively like surrounded by the sources of your fear, so you got nowhere to go. Oh. Yeah. That's my plan. My next attack was a 19. That is a hit. Nice. What do I hit? Um, I'm going to roll a d6 yeah. to see which one you hit. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you hit hemorrhage. The purple ah, one. Good. The one that purple. has, has eye bite. Yep. Whoop. Um, 21 damage. Bludgeoning Ooh. damage. That leaves her bloodied. Oh, I remember that stuff. We'll get to that. Um, and does she make her concentration check? Please. She does. Ooh! She does. She ah! So eye bite continues to be in effect as you swipe her with the backhand. Uh, and she stumbles back and growls. It is her turn. Um, and she does not like being right up to you. And she's like, you behave. And she turns the eye uh, down upon you. Um, and y- she says, uh, and she uses the eye bite against you again. And this time she's going to try to make you go to sleep. Oh, make a wisdom saving throw. Uh Oh, uh, 18. Okay. You succeed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So why? So wise. I'm a wise ape. All right. We I go know to the sign language. You are indeed. We go to the top of the round with Veil. All right. I peek language. out around the corner and I see the blue hag that turned me into a uh, cat. And I say, nobody makes me a smaller version of myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and a critical one. <laughs> and you shoot the doorway beside her. Uh, and then as a bonus action, I cast Zephyr Strike and I say, let me try this one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody makes me a smaller version of myself. Oh, and then I got a 20 to hit. That is a hit. Oh. And sneak attack. 
Not is she big. close enough? Is she or no? Or no, no, she's. I think she's a little. Well, uh, she advantage. is. No, there. Yeah. I have advantage anyways, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Because I'm huge. <laughs> Twenty-eight damage. What happens? She is slain. <laughs> oh, I want to get her right in the throat so she can't cast anything else and dies. <laughs> and with a gurgling noise, oh. she falls to the ground, and you feel in this moment the magic of the other. Crones is broken as without their sisterly bond, they have lost their ma- the anchor of their magic, and the eye bite spell ends. Oh. And minute spell ends. Yeah. <gasps> minute. You're and not I minute anymore. <laughs> you back got better. The corner. <laughs> she turned me into a newt. That's so rude. A newt. I got better. <laughs> We go now to Sebastian, who has gotten better from being a newt. Um, How are you feeling? I step out, and I'm like, which one of you hags turned me into? And then I see the dead one on the <laughs> ground, and I'm like, oh, well, I'll take my vengeance on the rest of you. And I'm just going to cast a firebolt at the green one's face. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a 19. That is a hit. That's nice. nice, nice. 13 damage. Okay. And then I go, oh, she's not dead. And then I run back into this room. <laughs> okay. The, with, uh, so, Disgracia is dead. So, uh, Thrombrosia, the, uh, the green hag, she disengages and she pushes herself against the arcane locked door which swings open on the other side. So the the second door of this room was oh, also arcane locked, leading out onto the battlements. Get her. And she opens it up, runs through it, and slams it closed. <laughs> <laughs> Abandoning her sister. Does Pluto get an opportunity? No, she disengaged. She... Oh, yeah. What about all the They're paladins right. out there? Well, um, you Neither of you can see because you're both hiding behind the walls. Yeah. Fair. I don't even know. Don't even know. Okay. Um... And next we go to Paluto. I uh I've regained my mind. I'm not as frightened. Um I run back. Oh wait, I can't fit through those doors, can no, I? No, no, you can't you cannot fit through those doors. Um I'm gonna make <laughs> Deragia Discragia fit through the door. Uh hemorrhage. Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna start pounding on her head in rage and I miss. I I hit what I think is a, I attack what I think is her, and I miss with one big fist, and then I come down with an 18. It smashes her in the face. And, oh, gross, um, 35 damage. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, that's way too That many leaves attacks. her bloodied and horribly broken, but still alive, if only barely. Um, man, I really wish I didn't miss on that first attack. Uh, yeah, that's me. Uh, it's her turn. She's also going to disengage and run through the arcane lock door. <laughs> no! We need to get this gate open! Yeah, I, I, uh... There's a problem. Uh, yeah. I brought Pluto into this world. By this world, I mean this room. <laughs> and and I don't know how to get him out. Pluto, can you smash the wall? Um, well, I, I, you are also already in the South Tower. It's true. Let's just go up. Yeah. Can I get through the doorway to lead into the... No, that's even, that door is even smaller. Question, though. We need to undo the locks, the, the pins in that door. Yes. Or else okay. we won't be able to go up. Unless somebody gets it and we wait down here. Tell you what. Okay. I'm going to run over to like these... or the, the Silver Order. Are they at the gate? They're... The the cavalry is almost here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I stop concentrating on ape Pluto, mm-hmm. and I'm like, guys, we need to we need to get that gate up. We need to go upstairs and figure that out right now. Yep. Go. And we need to unlatch the gate as well. Yep. So I guess we're gonna let the gate drop the five feet. Okay. Do it. Yeah. So you unlatch it. It drops. 
and then we need to run upstairs. Cool. You rush up the ladder, and before you is another another room like before, which looks like the the these crones might have been using it as their bedchamber of some kind. It's very disgusting and filthy, um, and shows piles of half-eaten corpses. Uh, rats in cages and various amounts of fecal matter. But you're able to clear a path through and get to the other ma- machinery. You pull open the gate. Yeah. I let the rats go. Be there free! is a, ha- a horn that sounds as a thunderous charge of the Silver Order rushes forth towards the gate. And that's where we're going to take our break. Uh... Before we delve into the ruins again. Uh, a big thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories that you see in our games, such as the initiative tracker, and occasionally we use the flight stands as well. Um, all amazing products by Axe and Shield, so definitely check them out. I believe he still has a couple days left on his Kickstarter. He so does out. indeed, yeah. and he has sweetened the pot with some recent offerings. Ooh. Uh, so there's some really cool stuff to check out there if you're looking for the flight stands and all the other accessories that we use. It's a really good time to pick them up. Definitely. A uh, big shout out to Tabletop Audio for always providing our ambient music, our kind of like our our backdrop to the chaos that is Drakenheim. <laughs> um, check it out, tabletopaudio.com. It's all free. Uh, it's a great way to just kind of liven up the um, the feel of your own D and D games. Um, and mm. for all type, we all kind of have even. Uh, Sebastian was showing me some music that he likes to listen to when he has big boss battles and stuff. You, it, it really helps the tones. Check it out. TabletopAudio.com. And finally, thanks to 100 Years Boar for the amazing voiceover in our intro video, always introducing our epic adventure in Drakenheim. Check them out streaming here on Twitch. If you're enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, you can check us out on Patreon by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And of course, tonight's episode of Dra- Dungeons of Drakenheim is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. They've sent us a fantastic collection of their premium metal dice that we use at the table, uh, which have done pretty good. We had some critical hits and some uh, really clutch missed concentration checks <laughs> <laughs> earlier tonight. So thank you so much for to Sp- Skull Splitter Dice. Please check them out at skullsplitterdice.com and you can use the discount code DDUDES at checkout save 15% off your first order with them. With that, let's return to the ruins. There is a thunder of hooves, a roaring tide as the cavalry of the Silver Order charges forward across the field towards Temple Gate. You can hear the clash as as the gate rises on both sides, a group of gnolls from near the city, from the inside of the city, rush through the gate to meet the oncoming cavalry. But they are smashed aside, and you can hear the sounds of battle in the underneath the murder holes below you. Um, and looking up for a moment, Sebastian, you catch eyes of Virgil fighting forward on horseback as the Silver Order charges through the gate. Um, and with that, you can hear the sounds of battle all around you as the Silver Order pushes the attack. What will you do? What were we supposed to do at this point? Uh, uh, blow the horn? Two blow the horn. Two, two right? Two yeah. toots. You have the horn, right? Do I? <laughs> so you're blowing it inside the walls. So that's yep. a little a little hard for them to hear, but uh, a few up above they get the signal <laughs> that you're okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like blow the horn, go up, and you're already blowing it, and it's like. <laughs> As you do so, um, the this room is ruined in utter chaos after sending the explosion of the cauldron (laughs) rocking across the entire room. There are tatters of corroded books, scrolls, vials of various alchemical ingredients, dying insects, and several secure chests. 
pardon me, um, there are several secure chests that have mar have survived some of the shrapnel as well. But you can see stacked up in the corner amidst these glowing braziers are the, the shattered remnants of what looks like several heads on spikes that were in this room flanking a the marred and acid washed ruins of a small idol carved in a familiar form that of a goat headed demonic figure with bat like wings that is scattered now on the floor opposite the remnants of the cauldron and the large desk that the hags had in this room. This guy again. What was the statue doing here? The statue's blown up too? It's covered in shrapnel and damaged from what's happened. There's a big piece of iron that's kind of clocked off part of the, the face of it. And it's been knocked over from the from the battle, but now that you can see that it is is here as the battle rages around you, I kind of pick it back up and like stand it up and just kind of step back. Mm -hmm. It's a small idol made of of obsidian stone, so it's quite heavy, but it's no larger than about twelve inches in height itself, and it's just kind of uh, the the demonic form kind of sitting cross legged. As I stand it back up, I kind of step back and I go, Are you there, demon? Sorry for destroying you. I didn't know you were here. I don't know if you can hear me. Why are you apologizing to him? Yeah, you're apologizing to the demon? Well, I blew up his face. The demon. Yeah. I, just, I feel bad about that. I think you want to do that, though. I don't oh. know what I want out of this demon yet. <laughs> we're, we're still yeah, working I on I our I shouldn't rapport. get ahead of myself. Yeah. As you talk into it, it seems that the damage to the face of the statue, if it had any ability to communicate, whatever's happened to it seems to be broken. Like you feel, you can see that the obsidian is cracked all the way through from the explosion itself. Oops. Huh. I'm more worried. And about it these is is silent stone. Never mind then. And I, uh, I would like to look around the rest of the room. Did I blow up? Like, is everything gone? It is in really bad shape. Um, there are the charred remnants of several arcane spell scrolls and the broken vials of several potions and marred ruins of, uh, of spell books on the shelves around here. There are several chests and cracks, cracked vials um, and other broken arcane Im implements and pieces of ingredients there are several chests that have survived the devastation, but I'll pretty much as you go through it, you might want to spend longer time to go through for sure, but at first glance, most of the arcane implements did not survive what happened in this room. I want to start to pick open the chests. Um, door? That door? And the other door? If we look through, can I see to the other side? Is that door still closed? That Didn't other work? door is still closed, yeah. Because we might want to either help out the fight on the wall, or I kind of want to try to see if I can pick up the dead egg <laughs> and use her to open the door. <laughs> this time, I'm going to use her body and like push her hand against the sorry, against the door. It does not open. Rats. Good try. Nice try. And I throw her slump body against the door in anger. I'm still picking the lock. Do I get anything out of the, the chest? Yeah, you're able to uh, give me a thievery check as you open up the chest. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh. So you crack open the chest very, very quickly, um, getting several of them broken up and open as you open the chest up inside are several trinkets and bags of gold a few secured manuscripts and there are 
three large delirium crystals, probably each weighing about 25 pounds. Oh. Now, remember that a delirium crystal, because delirium is, a, is about as dense as gold, it doesn't need to be very big for it to weigh 25 pounds. But these are very valuable delirium crystals. They're pro- they, the, the type that you could probably sell to the Academy for at least a thousand gold pieces each. Do you want to put those in your bag of holding? Yeah, load them in. Um, and there are six smaller fragments that are probably worth about a uh, hundred gold pieces each. Six fragments. Yeah. Okay. Twelve Yikes. fragments. We have yep. three crystals and six large chips right now. Mm-hmm. We're, we're dealing in that. That's now. in in one of one of the chests that is uh, is in there. How much? Um, gold? How much gold was that? Uh, inside the chest was approximately seven hundred and forty-two gold pieces. Nice. Like basically, two forty-seven with uh, two less gold. Two forty-seven thirty-three. So take two forty-seven. Nice. And then once we sell all that delirium, we can buy me a new ring. Well, we'll see about who we're selling it to, though. Or yeah. We got to investigate. The Opening up uh, the chest, you can see that the inside of this chest that had the delirium in it, the inside of it was lined with lead. Oh. Okay. Well, that's always good to know. Yeah, maybe that helps. Shield. The magic. Or delirium. Yeah. yeah, maybe there's like a there's something we don't know. Hmm. If Take you wear milk. lead armor, can you carry delirium? There is can I carry another <laughs> one other chest that you're able to open up as as well. With how well you open up the first one, you figure out that the mechanism is the same in, in both. Mm-hmm. Um, the other chest uh, contains uh, another three hundred and eighty seven gold pieces uh, in various coins. Uh, as well as um, several uh, uh, s- a box of turquoise animal figurines in carved in various shapes. It's probably worth about 250 gold pieces as well. Let's take 129. Woo. Yep. And there were several scrolls and potions in this room, but they have been destroyed. Uh, who are, did that? How much were the figures Some, worth again? Sir? The 250 gold pieces. Do we have to sell them, or can we just add the gold now? Yeah. Uh, you can. You should write them down, but because you will have to sell them to somebody. Yeah. Okay. I will um, write them down. How many? Three. Three. Yeah. Three. Three. What? What material? Um. They are made of turquoise. Turquoise. Finally, as you survey the wreckage, Paluto, you see that there is a sack that is curiously intact. Oh, a curious sack. And it seems to have um, some volume to it. Like there's something inside it. Um, it's it's a large sack, probably about a foot in size. Like something that would be large to wear around your waist, but you could. Um, and it looks like there's something soft inside it. I reach inside. Um, Hello. Without <laughs> As you reach inside, you can feel what feels like to be a curled up fuzzy ball inside. I look. There's a you you look inside, kittens, and it looks like there are several curled up fuzzy balls that have various types of animal fur around them. Oh. Oh, what are those? Are they breathing? Are they alive? They're slightly breathing, like <gasps> pulsing like they're breathing. Oh, and they're oh. balls. They're not like... I'm going to pick one up. Oh! Um, roll, a, roll a d8. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Gently. Five. As you pick the ball up, as it, you pull it out of the bag... It drops out of your hand and falls at your feet and uncurls 
and a gigantic black bear <laughs> appears. Put it back in the bag. Ah! Put it back in the bag. And it seems totally friendly to you. It's like a big fuzzy bear, and it's it. Yeah. So it like did it enlarge into a bear? Yeah. Oh, the fuzzy oh. ball enlarged into a full size black bear. Oh, I go rub my face on its fur. <laughs> I it's the same color as me. Pluto, this is some kind of m- trickery. <laughs> Pluto, that's that bag is magic, and I think you just pulled a bear out of a bag. Um, I, do we know what this is? This bag is. Or is it just a regular? There's bag some magic, magic to it. it. Whatever the whatever these strange balls inside it are, it, it became a creature. Pluto, can you put it back in? Yeah, can you put it back in the bag? Can <laughs> you try? I don't think just, it wants to go back in. Just try. This is my friend now. Oh, what's his name? <laughs> his name is. My first idea wasn't going to be good. Uh, is it a girl or a guy? Uh, it's uh, it's a boy, <laughs> and his name is um, Huck. Ah. I I start trying to put Huck back into the bag. <laughs> uh, you you try as you might, and you cannot force the bear back into the bag. Come on, Huck. as you examine it, though, you realize that this item is a tan bag of tricks. It's a magical item, and three times per day, you can pull such orbs out of it, and they become animals. Oh. Um, you got it? That's a neat little bag of tricks you got there, Pluto. Bag of holding, bag of tricks. Hmm. Oh, no. This is hilarious. As you continue to loot the room, the sound of battle continues all around you. We should probably help them. Maybe. Yeah, no, we, we did a lot of work. I mean, we did most of the work. Well, I say as they're like charging against an army of like noise. An army of noise. Yeah. Do you guys want to like open up this door to the wall and just see what's going on? Oh yeah, we can't. It's arcane locked. Yeah. Right. Mm. We can go the other way though. There is a short time later as you as you go up, and one of the the you hear a, a call from the stairs that you where you destroyed the ladder, and you say, "Hello up there. Are you all right?" Who's that? Who goes there? Ah, <laughs> uh, now I thought I heard you all up there. You blew that horn. It's it's Virgil. You uh, remember? Virgil. Yeah. Yes. We, Are you all, all right up there? We're we're, we're uh, making it by. We, do you uh, did you bring the healing with you? We've we've got Flamekeeper Hannah with us. Do you need help? Yes. Well, I mean, we took care of everything up here, but I would like. Flamekeeper Hannah to, to help. Well, me. you you come on down. You got a way to get down. You was it you knocked down this ladder? Well, we did to make sure that nobody would come up. There were a lot of knolls. We tried to break uh, passageways as we went. Good that you did. There were a bunch down here. Oh, good. Yeah, <gasps> we're so smart. Woo-hoo. Um, we managed to fight our way through the doors on the on the inside of the city. I think the gate's ours now. Woo! Yes. We did our job. We uh, made we sure. Clap for ourselves. <laughs> good job. Good job. Yeah, yeah, each other yeah, on yeah, the back. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, I'm going to come down and I um, <laughs> I take my, um, uh, what is it, the shot? Um, and I point it towards the ground <laughs> and I get it to whiz me down the ladder. But What, what no about ladder. the rest of us? Uh, I'll. Uh, I you jump down? Tie a rope. Okay. I guess because Feo isn't being helpful to the rest of us, <laughs> yeah. and I climb, I climb down. Is it hook shot? Um, Grapple shot. Virgil says, "I know you've done a lot, Veo, but if you can run a line back up to the top, we're gonna try to seize the battlements here. There's, uh, we we're getting word back from the hooded lanterns that we're probably gonna see another wave of gnolls coming to try to retake the gate right away, mm-hmm. and if we want to hold this." For any more than a day, we need to fortify it before the next wave comes. So you want me to... Do you have a rope? I do. Perfect. And I use my uh, grapple shot to heft myself up each way and, like, attach a rope as I go Mm -hmm. um, all the way up to the top, but making sure that I clip it in along the way. You three, this place is a horrible mess. Uh, 
Uh, yep. A lot of gnolls required a lot of mass. Flamekeeper Hannah's here. She's going to tend to you. We were we're going to turn this level here quickly into a bit of a hospice for the wounded. We've got we've lost a lot, but we're going to get everybody alive. We're going to keep who we can alive. Are any of you seriously hurt? Yes. <laughs> I'm actually I'm I'm okay. I got stuck by a manticore. I got a lot of spells thrown at me. I got electrified. They turned me into a newt. Me a cat. I mean, I'm already a newt. Got better. <laughs> How many times can we make that joke in one episode? <laughs> We're going to go for the record. Um, in any case, Virgil continues. All right. Well, you've done. You must be exhausted. You, based on how many gnolls were down here and how many were up there, you were really. This was like the strong point. Like we've run into resistance. There were some big, big anger mothers back there, but this was a lot. You've worked a miracle here. That's what we do. We are a miracle. My name is Sebastian Crow, taker of Temple Gate. The Knolls paid the ultimate toll. The Knoll toll? The Knoll toll. <laughs> the Knoll toll. Well, the day is not over yet. We're going to bring the next wave in and through. We're going to have to fight them off. But now that we got this, we got to send the signals to the Hooded Lanterns, get them here because they got better archers than us and they're going to be better defending this place than we are. I can uh, use some of my magic to help secure uh, ladders back onto these areas so that we have ways up and down. Is the other stairwell intact? The other one should be, yeah. Yes. All right, then we should be able to fortify the south. The siege towers landed on the battlements uh, on the walls to the the south as well, so we're doing well up there. But we might expect another wave from the north too. You all, you deserve a bit of a rest, though. Yes. I think so. I could use a rest. We 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 have a day before another the the like more gnolls show up, right? You kidding me? The Hooded Lanterns have done well. We haven't heard too much from them, though, about how they're pushing the Null forces, but we're expecting the Nulls to regroup and attack back here within another hour at least. That's oh. A short rest. <laughs> Patches up. That. Okay. You what we can get? I'm not going to be much use to you. Well, that's fine. You've done your part. If. We would take your help if you can get it, but we're going to be. Now that we've taken the, the gate, our front lines, we're going to send them back to rest and recuperate. We're, we're going to send in our reserves to hold the gate now. Mm. If you want to help out, that could help the situation. But if you can't, no one's expecting you to. I can help hold the gate. I can help the archers, but honestly, yeah. we, we could do as a party with the rest, though. I got a few little spells that I can conjure maybe, up. Maybe but I'm pretty drained. It's okay. Maybe just the through the murder holes. I could I could firebolt from some murder holes. Hopefully, it don't come to that. Does all the mechanism still work in here? Uh, yeah. Our intent is to close the gate from this side. Use the siege tower on this side to load people up and get people onto the walls, and fight from the inside. We hold the walls now. So that means that we can attack the gnolls that are coming from inside the city and from even the rest of here. We're going to be using this as a strong point and hopefully just turn this into a killing field. Mm. Good strategy. And then when do you plan on moving forward to the cathedral? Once we ground down the numbers of the gnolls. We expect probably the that big old knoll, that lord of the feast, probably going to gear up for a counterattack of his own. If he was, if he's as vicious as they say, who knows how soon that could come. It could come today. I can't take on the Lord of the Feast until I get a nappy nap. Yeah. I think we're going to need a long rest in order to regain our strength and then come full force into the battle with the, uh, the Lord of the Feast. Or at least to push past him and get to the cathedral. I think we fought literally as hard as we could to get this gate we want to take on the lord of the feast but if 
what you're saying is true and they could have a counterattack. I think it's important that we go now, we tend to our wounds, we rest up, and we make sure that we're ready to go by as soon as possible. Give us 10 All right. hours. In that case, I'll get you two of my riders and they'll ride you back to Camp Dawn. Will they be able to ride us back here as soon as we're done? Our rest? Griffins. Amazing. I, are you guys okay with that? I'm not going to be very helpful out here. I mean, like, I could go by myself. Yeah. You're all in good shape. There's a lot of, there's a lot of us that are hurt a lot worse than you three. Like, even in, at your lowest capacity, I think you could still do a lot for the gate. Because if we lose the gate, all of this is in vain. And what, if we're not here to defend what it. What if the Lord of the Feast shows up? Like, then he's probably going to take it with, take it from them. I think if, um, how about we do a short rest, help fortify, and then take a long rest. So you said 10 hours, right? So if we take an, an hour to help fortify after a short rest, and we can take eight hours to the long. Because at least if they counterattack, we're here. We can even sleep hours. here. We can even long rest here. Yeah, if we help fortify mm. it and then take a long rest while we're here, at least they can wake us up. And the biggest advantage rest. we have right now is that if the Lord of the Feast or any of the other gnolls attack, we're counting on them not having anything in the way of siege equipment. They don't have the means to scale a wall. They don't have ladders. They don't have grapples. They don't have anything like we've got. And on the other side of the city, they've got to contend with all the ruins and everything else in there, which is a killing ground for the hooded lanterns who know the streets like the back of their hands. Mm. It's much harder for them to attack us than it was for them now that we've taken this gate. I think that they can hold this position. It, if you say so. I mean, I don't want to tell you what to do. I'm just, I'm just saying that right now, I can't turn anybody into anything. I can't teleport. I can't. I like. I. I feel very tired, Pluto. Maybe. Uh, maybe there's a. a and little I have potion. a cut on my arm. There's a, maybe a little potion you could. Uh... Even even that potion that's gonna give me one big attack. Yeah. I think we do better to to rest up because I mean, for me, my magic too. I'm pretty low as well, and. And I saw you fighting in there, and I also saw you slowing down a bit until I turned you into an ape. So, I, I uh, don't don't try to act like you're the most heroic person in the world. I, I know I'm that, not. I he know is. that you think you are, he is. but he's very heroic. I mean, you are the most heroic person I've ever met. That's true. But I don't want to see you die out there. That's true. If, That's I feel like true. if we're not here, the gate's gonna get lost. Then let's sleep here. Yeah, if we can long rest. Can we long rest here? You can stay here if you want to. I mean, we are going to try and use the space to shelter any of the wounded, and we're going to use every inch of it for defenders. But if you want to stay here, you want to rest here, we're not going to stop you. We would love to have you helping out here, and if you feel better about camping out here and doing that, I just don't know if you're going to get much of a rest because this fighting's not going to let up. I say we go back to camp, and then we can always keep an eye out. I'll, I would I'll go say with you guys. if it gets rough, like send word for us, and we'll come back. Is there an option for one of us to stay behind and take a short rest while the other two go and take a long rest, or does that? I don't. I'm. I don't know I'll, I'll come works. with you guys. Uh, we're the a team. Like track and force. I actually don't know how that mechanically works. Like I want to play to our strengths right now and i i agree mm. with you i just do not want to go up against the lord of the feast as i currently am yeah i'm i'm out of all ability to do things mm -hmm. i'm out of uh sorcery points and spell slots no I, I agree with you it's just that if he's coming and we're not here this might all be for nothing and I so i'd rather be here even if we can't take him than not be here does that make sense like, and we're the only thing standing if he comes. All, all you need is a short rest to get back up and running, right? I mean... You just need to, like, take a small nap. I can take a nap. How far away are we if we go to camp? Like, how much of a ride in would it be? A couple miles. So, like, we could get here. I mean, we could take you back up as well to, to the barracks. But, of course, the other side of the city, the whole sprawl, 
it's a battleground right now too. We don't know yeah. all the gnolls that are outside the city walls have all been stirred up like a bunch of hornets as well. And we're expecting we we're expecting that we're going to have to consolidate here at Temple Gate because all the gnolls that are outside the city and all the gnolls that are inside the city they're going to converge right back on here and we're going to have to do and do this all over again. I mean, a couple miles is a couple miles, right? What if I... Can I load cantrips into my spell storing ring? Uh, they aren't leveled spells, so what would the purpose of that be? To give it to Pluto to attune to temporarily with a firebolt that he could use as a flare. They have means of signaling okay. that would be more efficient than that. Fair. Yeah. I just wanted to check. So what if... What if you stayed here, me and Vale went back to camp and rotated sleeping shifts <laughs> so that we were just watching, and as soon as you send a signal to us, we'll come back. If you go to camp and we need you, by the time you get back here, it might be too late. If you guys want to sleep... It's okay if you want to go back to camp. But we're gonna do, and we're gonna do our best. But you either need to be here or not, because even if we signal you, even if to get you somewhere safe where you can rest, is either here or back at one of our camps. And if there's trouble, someone shows up. Like, look at, we took the. It's only been a short battle. We, you, did a blitz job on this place, and if we got to hopefully. No one can mount an attack like you did back on us because I don't think we could handle a counterattack like that. I don't think there's anybody else who could attack like us. Other than the unless Lord of the it's Feast. us. There were those hags, but but no, um, they need to rest. The hags too. are broken. We killed one of them. Friends, we're we're tracking force. We're a team. So I uh, we're not splitting up. I don't. I'm with you. I guys. don't want to abandon this post, but I'm scared of like. We can't continue the way the way we're at. Like I'm exhausted. Yeah, we gotta rest. That took everything. If, if, I if have. you guys want to, uh, I'm with you. Let's go back to camp. We've you all have job. given us everything, and you don't need to feel bad. Now it's our turn to do our part. Yeah, we're not. A this one. is what we're here for. We know that that without you, we wouldn't have gotten this far. We would have. There's a whole it's bunch of people us. here. A whole bunch of my soldiers that would be dead if you hadn't risked your lives doing this. But you did. And we lost far fewer people than we would have in a full frontal assault without that. Things went well on the walls, but what you all did here, the way you blew up all those siege engines right off uh, up the top, those things would have killed dozens of people before we could have gotten you, could have got close. But that alone, but then the fact that you opened the gates and let us come through, we got control here. Let us and the Hooded Lanterns do our part. Okay. We're a three people army, but there are many people army. Also, you guys can keep Huck. Huck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if any of you guys want to ride a bear. In the How battle. did you get a bear in here? You know what? Magic. Yeah, it's probably, it's the bag. <sighs> Let's yeah. just say that Pluto Jackson has a bag of tricks in his pocket. In his bag. And his <laughs> bag. Fair enough. It's a bag in a bag. All right. I'll get some of the riders. They're gonna ride you back. Do you want to head back to the barracks or to Camp Don? Uh, the camp is closer, right? The barracks is closer, but oh. the route's more dangerous. I we say, got a direct line back to Camp Don. I say back to camp. Camp, yeah. Hey, Commander, you hold this position. I'm not the night commander. I am Virgil. <laughs> and uh, he is exhausted. Okay. He's really tired. I'm so I'm tired. Is fine. I thought that all of the paladins were the night commander. And look at the cut he has on his hand. Yeah. I got this cut like right here. <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a lieutenant, if you will. Lieutenant Virgil. <laughs> Did I do it that time? It's technically not lieutenant, but in any case. It's, uh, All right, Virgil. He he leads you out. He leads you down. There's a there's a um 
there's a sally gate or a um a port um a port gate that leads into the towers from inside the city so they lead you down to the lower level where there's just carnage of slain gnolls and they've they're already bringing in some of the wounded paladins to tend to them and flamekeeper hannah does come up to all of you and uh she does cast prayer of healing uh so you all regain uh 20 hit points nice. just to just to get you out there i she's a young fiery haired flamekeeper um that was on the front lines of the of the cavalry she says go with the light um she casts the prayer of healing and and also tends to several of the other wounded that have been brought in as well. There are a few of the paladins that have been had limbs hacked off that have grievous wounds across their faces and bodies. They're screaming in pain, but all of them you can see, even the most wounded of them, there's the purpose that's lighting their eyes that they know that they have achieved something today. As I walk by one of the ones with the missing limb, I look down at the cut on my hand and I look at the... the uh paladin i say i know buddy <laughs> i know and i keep walking and he, and he said he says don't worry just a scratch i know i got one too <laughs> um brothers in arms as you head there's a short as you head out the doorway leading into this tower has been battered down by the paladins there's a small ram and a staircase that leads down and you're inside the city in Temple hand. Road at Temple Road as the paladins slaughter the last remaining gnolls in the square that's just around Temple Gate. And as they do so, you can see that, that um, there's a, a horn call as several more of the hooded lanterns come out from the ruins and start approaching from various sides. And you see a rather uh, bloodied uh, Ansem come come out he's got blood strewn all across his face and he comes up to virgil and he acknowledges all of you and says it's been hard fighting on the inside but we've held them back they're gonna regroup they'll 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 probably be more of them within the hour we've got a lot of wounded but you've taken the gate you did it we did we lost a lot of people but we managed to stop the gnolls inside the city from coming towards the gate. Petra? She's, she's okay. She's hurt, but she's okay. The Lord Commander himself is regrouping the rest of the Hooded Lanterns, and we're going to be making for this, this position to recuperate. A few of us are going to be retreating back to the barracks as well. We think that there's probably going to be more coming within the next hour or two for another attack. But some of But our advanced scouts have gone out around the cathedral and we're trying to see if the Lord of the Feast is going to join the field. We haven't caught sight of him yet. That's good. You look like you need some healing. It's been a lot. There were, were a few close calls and we've lost a few good people. I got stabbed by a manticore. It was terrible. There were a few more of them out here, around here as well. Ooh. I got cut. <gasps> you look fine to me. I just... Came from a pair of he prayer of healing. Um, well, aren't you lucky? Okay. Uh, you, Do you I want mean, healing? We could use it. And I put my hand on him, and I cast second level cure wounds. Aw, that's so that's kind. Fun. And I mumble, well, next time you can take the gate, then. It's nine. He was nine just heals. To me. Thank you. Look, I'm trying to share. But there's a few. A moment. I appreciate it. Your cut's gone, too. Do you have any more where that oh. came from? I got a few more people that really need it badly. I got one more on me, but... As he says, so Flamekeeper Hannah says, I can get them. It's it's all right. This is what I'm here for. She got this. <laughs> Anson Sorry. looks at Virgil and says, are you getting them out of here? And Virgil nods. All right. I got to get back as well. We're going to send a few more of our units here to help reinforce. We did it. We took the gate. We still have a lot of fighting to do. We're going to be back here as soon as we're able. So will we. Is it dangerous along the way back? Inside the city, we've got our reinforcements and our reserves 
we've been our reserves have been protecting the route back to the barracks inside the city. If you want to, we could lead you through the city back to the barracks as well. We'll just go the safest route. All right. You're going to Camp Dawn? Yeah. Okay. Meet See you, you on the other here. side. With that, Virgil sets you on a few horses with several of the other wounded knights. And um, you ride with a group of... Basically, those there are a few members of the Silver Order that were part of the initial assault that have survived, that are not wounded, and they are riding with you back. And amongst all of you, even the horses that you're riding on are panting with exhaustion. Ne uh, several of the knights and the riders, they kind of consolidate, and there's a few... Uh, like. There's a few people that are riding horses that they didn't come in on and vice versa. Because some have been slain, but the, the, some of the horses were slain, but the riders were not and vice versa. So people have mixed it up a little bit. And so you and about a dozen other members of the Silver Order solemnly ride back out of the city towards Camp Dawn. The din of battle begins to die down as you ride out of the city and it gets quiet again as you go through the Karen Hills towards where Camp Dawn is. What time of day is it? It's now the afternoon. Mm. The attack was in the morning. Is it raining? It wasn't this morning. And is it now? Actually, yes. As you ride out a torrential rain breaks and there's a crack of lightning as an afternoon thunderstorm comes in. Bad memories. Yeah, you, you got hit by lightning. <laughs> I did. It hurt. Feeling the static in the air and it's not pleasant. Seems fitting. I just want a war and since it's poor, those things rhyme. It's a fresh, <laughs> fresh cleansing. You bring a, a bright new attitude to our, to our right. There's a man like dying on a horse. Wait, warm rhymes with yep. Oh. Poor. As the clouds break open and rain pours down and lightning strikes through the sky, one of the other knights says, "This is good. This is good. Fate smiles upon us with the rain coming down like this." The knolls won't be able to counterattack. The walls themselves will be too slick. Mm. They'll be able to get close, but it'll be hard for them to climb up. The mud around the city walls will bog them down. It'll be much easier for us to defend in the rain. There we go. And we get to stay dry, and they get soaked. Well, I'm pretty sure we're getting wet right now. Yeah. I mean, we as and I'm bone dry. <laughs> our our whole team back there. Oh. They get to stay dry. Oh, they, the oh. knolls will get soaked. True. We can just shoot them from the murder holes. Personally, I fight better when I'm not soaking wet. Yeah, I don't like to be yeah. soaking wet. Creed. Guys. That was that was intense. Well, that was super intense. And uh Bill, you turned into a cat. You turned Just into a, a different smaller, type of cat. I was going to say smaller version of what I kind of already am, but yes. No, that was very unpleasant. Never polymorph me into a cat. Ever. I won't. Why, Were you that, hungrier? That doesn't benefit us, usually. I mean, usually. Sorry for throwing you. I thought that you would hit <laughs> the hag, but instead I threw you at its feet. But then I clawed her face. Yeah, I saw that. That was great. Yeah. And Pluto. You pushed a guy off a tower, and then you tripped a manticore out of the sky, and then you stabbed it twice and didn't kill it. I hit a guy with a javelin. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> you As you arrive back at while. Camp Dawn, there are a few of the, the Silver Order squires Thank that you. are manning the fort and holding it down, and you are greeted once again by Ophelia Reed, who is commanding the camp she says as you come in welcome back 
How did it go? We've taken Temple Gate. We. <laughs> <laughs> we took Temple Gate. Now, triple threat. That is great news. You need rest. Yeah. Yep. It's Nailed it. Come. Long day. I'll see you to somewhere where you can let down for the night. It'll be, uh, I hope you'll get, be able to get some sleep. Do you need anything to soothe you? Milk. Tea. A song? I think we can do that. They lead you to one of the barracks tents that they've set up where there's some softer beds. And, they set, and she says, a bunch of the other captains are out on the field right now, so you can take these. Thank you. I you push said. it into like a into like where all the heads of the bed are all like <laughs> <laughs> pointing at each other. So we make like kind of like a, a a fork, like a triangle. I don't know what the word is. I know what you, you mean. know exactly know what, what I mean, mean, though. Everyone knows what I mean. Uh, we rearrange the room so that we can sleep head to head. Aww. Yeah, and we can look okay. up at the at the top of the bed. Now, Pluto, is there anything else you would all like to do before you sit down for the night? Pluto, as of our bet. I was keeping track of <laughs> Oh, you killed so many more. But you know what? Without your help, especially turning into that giant ape, we wouldn't have got out of there alive. So I will give you a cat massage. <gasps> <laughs> I turn over <laughs> and I eagerly await. And I start to like happy paws on his back. <laughs> you know what, Sebastian? You killed almost as many gnolls or people as me. So I'm going to give you a cat massage after. Yes. And you know what, Vale? Yeah, massages for everyone. Can we get can we get some uh some fish in in here for Vale? We'll do what we can. Okay. I'm gonna reach into the bag. No. No. <laughs> okay, do it. Okay. And and I pull out uh a giant weasel and what's an <laughs> axe beak? An axe beak is a large ostrich-like bird, <laughs> kind of like a strange mix be- that that can be ridden. That that's how large they are. I, yeah, uh, I say what? <laughs> You're just pulling out these animals, and I'm like, Pluto, what are you? Th- not in the tent. <laughs> I, they have a nasty tent. disposition, and they tend to attack unfamiliar creatures, but they can be trained as mounts and are in some par- parts of the world. Wow. Pluto, just... the axe beak can wait outside, but the giant weasel is also helping with the back. It's massages. a big feathered. Uh, ostrich-like bird. It's yellow in color, and it kind of like <laughs> can squawks I... at you. I throw it on the ground. <laughs> can I eat it? Oh my god! Oh, this is the ultimate question. I am going to bed, guys. Vale is looking <laughs> I'm like Pluto. Don't make me take that bag of tricks away from you. I think I deserve. If you keep pulling out giant animals I'm indoors. That <laughs> might accidentally like kill somebody who it doesn't recognize. I'm going to take no, the bag away. They, they, their corpses vanish when reduced to zero hit points. Oh. So, so eat it we, while it's alive. We learn that. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. I mean, if I cut we, its wing off, we could have a giant axe beak this, wing. This is horrible. We learn about it, uh, that it dies from that because Veo tries to... <laughs> Veo gets hungry <laughs> and shoots <laughs> it and it disappears. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I don't or maybe it's one of those situations that like you can eat it, but once it actually dies, whatever you ate disappears as well. So oh. you're left empty. Oh, afterwards. we're so hungry after. I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm so full. So hungry again. <laughs> now stop eating the bag of tricks. I don't want to. They're alive. <laughs> you're creating living creatures and you're eating, but they're not. Oh, God. We're a good team. <laughs> we tried, you know, tested it out. It could have been an unlimited source of food, but is there not. a weasel under my bed? <laughs> yeah, the, the weasel's just going around. He's exploring. Hmm. All right, uh, finished my oh. cat massages. Uh, I'm going to bed. Uh, and I face plant uh. into the pillow and start snoring. The night passes. Rest I sleep too. Morning comes, and there is a stream of soldiers in the morning, returning to Camp Dawn. Many wounded as over the night several wagons bearing the dead and the wounded of the Silver Order are brought back into Camp Dawn. 
there are no one disturbs you in the morning um and as you take your breakfast a few of the other soldiers say um even though some of them are wounded come up to you and say i heard about what you three did one of the soldiers says and i was running towards the walls and i saw that fireball go off that took the ceiling and i thought if that hadn't happened i would have been dead thank you no problem my name's sebastian crow and i'm here to rescue you when you need me and as the afternoon comes over another one of the paladins comes up to you and says rides into the camp and finds you and says are you all doing fine i feel much better fine now how does the wall hold we held out through the night yeah we had to change out and we lost a lot of people they kept attacking us all night Even no one the there room. got a lick of sleep but we made it through the night we, the hooded lanterns lost a lot of people but their arrows and archers they held it through the night we should go check in with the commanders yeah the night captain and the lord commander have returned to the hooded lanterns barracks where they're planning the next steps should we they've have asked there? when you can to return I, th- I think we're ready now yeah Pluto, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Let's ride. Let's do it. Cool. Where's my giant weasel? Disappeared. <laughs> As you begin uh, begin gathering your things together, there's a little bit of a commotion um, at the gate of Camp Dawn. Um, and you can hear an argument bet- behind, between one of the guards. Um, and they turn back around to you and say, There's someone else here at the gate asking for the three of you. What do they look like? It's this this blue-haired tiefling woman's here asking for you. Hmm. I have mixed feelings. We I, should, yeah, we should probably go talk to her. Yeah. Well, I she better start make it walking. Snappy. I'll 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 talk to her. We'll meet her outside. We walk out. Yeah. There. In the, in her usual garb, the purple traveling cloak and leathers, the symbol of the Amethyst Academy concealed, is River. She smiles. She says, you three have been very busy. Can we talk? We can talk. River? What class were we in together in school? Oh, good idea. Well, we had an itinerary where we were in basic potions and cantrips. I remember when you cast your first firebolt. And you also knocked over all the shelves in potions class with your first mage hand. What's my favorite fish? You like all fish, but you particularly enjoy salmon. She knows. How many fingers am I holding? It's her. Two. It's because a trick question. I like all fish. (laughs) Okay, thank you. We've uh, we've had passed all of our tests. (laughs) We've had some very interesting uh, things occur in the time that you've been gone. there's some things that you might... For the record, yeah. doppelgangers can read your mind, so when you ask them questions like that, they know what the answer is. Oh. Now I know your river. Yeah. Because that's how you <laughs> treated me in school as well. Um, well, now I know. <laughs> I, so, uncharacteristically, I run up and I hug her. She hugs you back. You're lucky to be alive, she says. I know. Can we talk somewhere privately? Yes. All right. Where? Uh, well, I, do you have somewhere private we can talk? Because we don't. 
we're heading that way. Want to walk with us? You can come with us for a bit. Can sure. we walk and talk? <laughs> sure. We got Let's we're, walk and talk. We got places to be. Also, should we take horses? We need to get there. Yeah. Sure. Let's take horses. Double time. So, you've been working with the Silver Order and the Hooded Lanterns. We've been working with everyone, but... (laughs) Kind of dabble. You can summarize this. What do you want to share with River? What do you want to tell her as you walk? Oh. Um, Do you want to tell her everything? Do you want to be selective? Like, what are things that you don't want to tell her if you're summarizing the story of um, how you, where you've been so far? I'm going to be honest. I don't even want to tell her where we've been. I just want to hear what she has to say because obviously she's approaching us for a reason. I don't know this about you guys. My, this is one of my best friends. Okay. So yeah, we also kind of lost We've had some that. iffies about uh, I know, but Amethyst Academy. Th- this is a question of, are you guys going to let Sebastian blab? Because Sebastian might tell more because he's talking to a childhood friend. I think we need a group huddle, yeah. River. River, give us a moment. <laughs> River, we weren't expecting you. We we're on our way to stuff, and um, and we're kind of busy. Yeah, <laughs> group huddle. We need a group huddle. Okay, <sighs> Sebastian. What? Remember, we're not sure about the Amethyst Academy. But I'm sure about River. I know, but she, her allegiances have so far been shown the Amethyst Academy over us. Also, we lost the bomb. We shouldn't bring that up. Yeah, we, we really don't want to tell her about the bomb. Guys, they're going to find out about that one way or another. If we lie, continually lie about it. Like, we have to lie. I just don't want to tell her about it. Yeah, and she also lies to us and stuff. She does so lie to like us fine. for like, not telling us information that we need. So I'd like to see what she has to offer first before just giving her all the All we're saying is we like, let us do the talking for a little bit. And let's not tell her everything. What? You can always tell her after we've killed everything in Dracula. Okay, you guys tell her what you want to tell her. I have a question for her once you're done telling her things. Yeah, I have more questions. I'd rather ask her things than tell her things. Okay, you know what? Go ahead. I'm, I'll am i keep my mouth shut. No, um, I, I want to hear your Are question. you all ready to talk? Your question. We're ready to talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're ready we all to look ask. Up from, the, from the huddle. Okay. We're ready to ask. So, what are you doing here, River? I should ask you the same question. I've Come back because it's time for the next steps. The Academy is ready to make a few moves in Drakenheim. But it seems like now we have to reevaluate our position because of the help that you just gave to the Silver Order and the Amethyst Aca- uh, the, the Silver Order and the Hooded Lanterns. River. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um the Amethyst Academy had a tower here back in when Drakenheim was a functioning city. Yes. And the Hooded Lanterns were the guard of that city, and they worked together. Why is that something that you would frown upon now, working together with, with people who also want to help the city? Sebastian, you're not a member of the Amethyst Academy, but you are a sorcerer. And I know you didn't pay attention in history class, but you know what happened to people like us before the Amethyst Academy? That part I have a bit of knowledge about. Do you know what people like the Silver Order and the Hooded Lanterns did to generations of people that have had the gift? But that was the ancestors of the people we're now dealing with and to hold them accountable for the same crimes that's not a good way to go about it sebastian yeah pluto i don't expect you to understand but oh i won't people are afraid of magic people are afraid of people who wield it and do you know why that is because magic can destroy the world And because of the power that we wield, we have worked hard in the Amethyst Academy to make sure that those who are born with gifts like yours, like mine, are found, protected, and taken care of. And the most important 
thing the Amethyst Academy has is that we are neutral politically across the entire world. We have towers in the cities of Caspia, Illyria. We had towers in Westermar. We have towers far away in Hept and even a tower off in the Isles. And all those towers work together with the people that are there. But the people of Drakenheim, the people of Lyria, our towers might as well be a prison as much as anything else. They're a place that we protect ourselves from the other people. And other people think that we're protecting them from us. And the only way we make it in this world, the only way they, the only reason why the academy has been burned down, like all the other operations hundreds of years ago that tried the same thing, is because we run like a business. And we are involved politically, but neutrally, with everyone else in this world. And now in front of us here in Drakenheim is one of the biggest opportunities that we have ever had. One of the biggest chances that we have to make a better world for people born with our gifts, for people born like us. And no one else is going to let us have that. The Hooded Lanterns aren't going to let us have it. The Silver Order certainly isn't going to let us have it. But there are thousands and thousands of young people all over the world that are born with a gift. And if we knew that we could help them, we need to. And now we can't do what we need to do in Drakenheim without risking our political neutrality. You know what, River? We've, we've as a group, tried to stay politically neutral. It doesn't exist in Drakenheim. You have to choose a side. It's what's meant to be in Drakenheim to figure out who's going to ultimately bring Drakenheim into a new age. And so far, the Amethyst Academy has really been so mysterious and secretive of their values and their intentions behind it. I want to know where this speech was, what, weeks ago when we were wondering what the heck we were doing, trying to figure out where we were in this. I also do want to say that you haven't asked the Hooded Lanterns or the Paladins of the Silver Order if they're willing to work with you. You're just making assumptions based on history. I didn't really pay attention in history class, but that's because I'm not one to care about what happened in the past, except my past. That I really care about. You're so like actually. super into it and you bring it up all the time. Yeah, but that's, that's true. not that's true. I mean old history, not my history. My history is important, but you're ruining my point. No, <laughs> I'm was, ruining my point. I, I was no, getting on top good. of it. Yeah. Good. River. Helping you. I don't I don't think we can take Drakenheim just for the Amethyst Academy. I think there needs to be a collaboration that happens. And yes, magic scares a lot of people. Trust me. I know that. I grew up with that. But magic also just saved a whole bunch of people back at Temple Gate. A lot of people, for the first time in my life, are telling me that I did something good. Who's to say that we can't pave a new way for spellcasters? They only feel that way because you're useful to them in the short term. But as soon as you become dangerous, they turn on you immediately. That's the way that people have always been treated. That's, that's the way that people in the academy have always been treated. And it's the way we continue to be treated. People respect the academy because we're useful. They're afraid of us. And they don't know what they don't know. The secrecy of the academy, our reclusive nature, has kept us alive. It's also and it's kept, kept people us, afraid of you. And that's... The, they have respected us, though. And they've respected us properly. And feared us enough to work with us, but not so much they wanted to destroy us. And if we act too rashly, if we act too drastically, if we show a moment of weakness, there are people that would want 
to know all of our secrets, to know all of our powers, to know all of the things that we are hiding. Things that they don't understand, that they're never going to know, that they're not, never going to grasp. We don't know the full extent of all the damage that has been done to Drakenheim. We don't know if the city can be saved. We don't know if the city or if delirium is something that is here to stay or go. But do you really think that anyone else is in any position to find out? I think that if we're going to find out, there needs to be teamwork. God, the work three together. of us. You're, you're talking to me, a spellcaster, who used to be a member of the Amethyst Academy. We have a Caspian here who's stood by my side since the moment I met him. And Veo here has been my friend since childhood. She's not a member of the Amethyst Academy. She never was. She accepted me for who I was. She always did. Hmm. So who are you to assume that every person out there... I mean, yeah, I got... I got picked on a lot as a kid for being different, for, for being a spellcaster. I caused a lot of problems, and I was shunned because of that. But the friends that I did make, those alliances are the strongest I have. And you are one of my closest friends, River. I know that it's been a long time, and I know that we, we don't talk like we used to. But you've always been one of my closest friends. and Sebastian, it doesn't matter what I think. It's not my decision to make. The council has made the decision. And they're not going to talk to you. Well, River, when this eventually comes crumbling down and whatever happens in Drakenheim happens in Drakenheim, I hope that no matter what happens between us that you still see me as a friend. I hope so too. You have to decide, though, now whether you're going to work with us or reap the rewards of that or whether you want to go off on this little fantasy that the three of you seem to have that everybody in this city can work together. Because to be honest, the council does not believe that the others in this city have the same interest in us. I'm not, I don't believe that either. The Silver Order barely tolerates our presence in Illyria. And their decree from the Hierarch is that the Delirium is profane and they wish to destroy it. That's what they're here for. And they could do it. That could be a good thing. I disagree, and so does the Council. The Delirium offers us a power and an understanding and secrets that we need to know fully, and maybe it will turn out that we do need to destroy it. But we will never know why this happened, where it came from, if there's more of it, if it even can be destroyed, if a bunch of gung-ho paladins are going around destroying it at every turn. Sounds like you're meddling in things that might cause more damage than good. And knowing that this council doesn't want to talk to anybody about their interests, how is that any way to try to get anyone, including a bunch of misfits like us, on your side to help work with you? The council is comprised of the greatest wizards of our age. I trust them and their knowledge and foresight more than anything else. I'm sorry, but they believe that we do not know enough about the delirium yet to really determine whether it's even a good idea to destroy it. And we don't know. The Silver Order could go in there start destroying delirium left, right, and center. What if they cause a bigger problem? What if they're unleashing something awful in the process of doing that? What if they're knocking about in something, getting it out in places in ways that it can't, can't be used or controlled? The delirium is dangerous. 
it defies those who want to control it. So the only way to keep it safe is to contain the city. And the only way the the only people that can do that is the Amethyst Academy. All the others, they'll only be able to destroy it or maybe survive. Well, and if the Academy is going to control the ruins of Drakenheim, the only way we're going to be allowed to do that is if the other nations think that there's no other way. And that's why it's so important that this city looks like a hopeless situation to everyone else but us. And now the Silver Order and the Hooded Lanterns have won a great victory because you helped them. And now they've got hope. They've got a belief that the city can be retaken, that the city can be saved. Unless there's a major setback that we can pin on somebody else, our chances of convincing anybody that we're the only ones that can actually do something about this are slimming by the day. And if you think that the Silver Order and the Hooded Lanterns can actually figure out what happened in this city, I'm sorry, but... I know one person who's determined to figure out what happened to this city and where the delirium came from. That's me. That's why I came back here. Well, then work with us. Or you can work with me, River. We'd like to. I'm not saying you is a we. I'm saying you, River. Work you, with me. What do you think I'm here to do? I don't know if I can follow you on this whole concept of the Amethyst Academy ruling over Drakenheim by themselves. But I'll tell you what we can do. Help me get to the bottom of what happened with my mother. Which, by the way, I hope you have news of, because that was the last thing that we talked about. But, if we can figure out, because I believe, deep down inside, that something about my mother, my birth, and the meteor, is all connected. And perhaps if we can solve that together, we can find out what the answer might be to our next steps forward. The Amethyst Academy's attitude has me concerned because, yes, we did help them. We helped the Hooded Lanterns. We helped the Silver Order because we too believe that there could be a better new Drakenheim. And I believe that you and even the Amethyst Academy could have a place in that. And yes, we do need answers. And I think we can get them. And that's what I'm here to do. Well, we'll have to find out what those answers are next week. Ah! Ah Cool, cool. cool. That was great. Awesome. Thank you so much uh, for quite an intense session. (laughs) Um, that's all, all the time we have for tonight, so that wraps it up. And thank you very much to our cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, for playing tonight. And a big thank you to Kyle for working behind the scenes to manage the stream, and our and to our producer, Clayton, who gets everything up uh, on YouTube as well. And uh, thank you to Axe and Shield for providing us with the awesome gaming accessories, like the initiative tracker that we had tonight. Um, and he also makes a lot of other cool accessories, and he has a Kickstarter going on, so please go check that out. Uh, they have some really cool stuff coming. And as always, a big shout out to Tabletop Audio for creating the soundscape at tabletopaudio.com. You can get free background music for your sessions. Uh, let us know the ones that you like. Uh, I hope it matches up with the feel and the rhythm of the game. And finally, thanks to 100 Years Spore for the amazing voiceover in our intro video, always introducing our amazing adventure into Drakenheim. Check them out here, streaming on Twitch. And we use Terrain by Dwarven Forge and Miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids. And tonight's episode of Dungeons of Dragonheim was sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. So they dice. gave us these awesome metal dice that we were rolling in the game tonight that made for some amazing combat moments. 
Yeah, yeah, if you'd like to get a set for yourself now, head on over to SkullsplitterDice.com and be sure to use the discount code DDUDES at checkout to save 15% off your first order. And if you're enjoying the stream and you want to help support our work, check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at Patreon.com slash Dungeon underscore Dudes. And by becoming a patron, you get access to our Discord. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim.